So today we're just going to come out and have a little play doing some, um, well hopefully do a bit of long round shooting if we get time, the light's quickly fading with these wintry days. But we've got with us a Mauser M12 in 243. Uh, we've got an Element Helix on there which is the 6 to 24 by 50 version. Uh, I've also brought with me a little trigger cam so hopefully we can get some footage through the scope. We'll be using, um, these are Norma and these are 75 grain uh, VMAX heads so uh, good ammunition this shoots quite well in this rifle so we're going to be using that to have a little play now I've not actually zeroed this scope yet so we're going to quickly zero it at 100 meters and uh, then have a crack at a target which is quite out there which is probably about 250 I should think uh, and then we'll uh, if we get time we go up on top of the hill and go out to about 400 so let's have a play So we are now at 100 yards and hopefully we should be on target. It looks pretty central, just have one more. Take it out a bit further then. Right, so we've uh, just sort of zeroed the rifle in, kind of roughly really, but we've got a target out here which is 100 metres as well. So I'm just going to have a shot on that just to confirm the zero because you want to be as exact as possible if you're going to be using it, shooting out longer ranges. So it's important to get that initial zero smack bang on. Right, so we're central, but we're just a little bit high, so I'm just going to knock the elevation down just a little bit. We're probably, uh, we're probably about an MOA high, so about an inch high, which if you were just using this as a point and shoot rifle, that would be the perfect sort of setup because that would pretty much put you bang on at 200. So uh, with an inch high at 100 is a, is a nice sort of zero point uh, for just general point and shoot kind of foxing and that. But uh, we'll just come down an MOA and that should put us pretty central on that target all, all going to plan. That's better. Right, so we can class that as being zeroed. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly set the turrets on the scope back to zero so I know where I am when I start dialing in. So that's a good thing with these element scopes is they're very easy to set the turrets all tool free. So that's set that to zero. Thread the cap back on that. We know where we are with that. This one is a little bit different because it's uh, it's got a zero stop function on it just so you don't lose track of where you are with that but again that's very easy to set by just turning this little cog here so the stop is on the inside of that little, uh, little thing there and then all we do is tighten that up with an allen key and that stops it going any further than uh, what it should with let's just find the right allen key 
No. It's could be a while. <laughs> Just pinch them up, not too tight. Three little grub screws on there. That's it. And that just stops it going any further than you want. So then we put the turret cap back on, set to zero. Like so. And then when we dial up, we can then come back and it stops at that point so we don't go too far it's very easy when you start doing two or three rotations of the turret when you're shooting out long distances to then lose track of where your zero rotation is so that's all good okay so now we've got the rifle zeroed we're going to um, have a go at a target that we've got just down the valley here it was actually the one we just uh, had a little play around on but that's out at 300 uh, meters from here or 297 so what we're going to do is we're going to use a phone app called Strelock Pro and uh, I've put all the information in that I need to on the, uh, the bullet, the bullet speed, bullet weight and all that. That's all in there. Uh, so we put in the distance of 297 and hit calculate and that gives us an adjustment of 3 MOA. So we're going to set our turret to 3 MOA and i'm not going to put anything on for windage at the moment because at the moment the wind's blowing straight down the valley and it's calmed down quite a bit from what it was earlier so i'm just going to go straight out that right let's have a go and see how good the uh the data is well that's nice and central so nothing wrong with that excellent right we'll take it out a bit further then Okay, so we have got a target we've just put out up on the bank there, which is at 560 metres. So let's put that into Strelock. So 560, calculate, is 9.5 MOA. So up to 9.5 on the scope. Uh, now, as you start going a little bit further out, the other thing to sort of take into consideration with this is the wind and what the wind's doing so down here it doesn't feel like there is too much wind so we just get a little bit of tissue and you can see we've got a very slight crosswind going across there it's not very strong it's probably here it's probably only about maybe three mile an hour but possibly up there where it's a bit more exposed it might be a little bit more so i think what we do initially i'm just going to go shoot straight at it I think and just see uh, if we're getting much effect with the wind on that at all but um, let's have a go and see see how we get on okay so that was a hit let's see where on there it hit so we'll have a we'll have another couple of shots And hopefully we'll be able to see the impact on there. Okay, so by well, the looks of that, we're just on the left edge of it. So I'm going to come over a little bit. See if we can put one a bit more central on there.
Okay, another hit. Okay, so again some nice consistent hits. Fairly central, just fraction low, so we just adjust that a little bit more. Just gonna come up. Another MOA on that I think. Yep, that's pretty good. It might have been a little bit high, so just knock that down a tiny bit. Right, well, I'm happy with that. So, with that information, I can now just adjust, adjust the app there, and um, we know where we're going for anything, well, whatever range now with these, uh, with these rounds. So, excellent. Right, okay, so I've just adjusted the, uh, the information on the app there to the corrected um, adjustments we had on the scope. So basically just true the drop. So that's all done. Um, I'll just have a couple more just for fun. But uh, you'll see, um, you'll notice I'm using a, a rear bag there. Now, that's really, really essential to get your crosshair steady and that on the, or to get the rifle steady when you're shooting. Um, Without that, it, it's very difficult to be consistent with your shots. Um, in honesty, probably shooting off the back of the truck isn't an ideal scenario. Um, really, you're better off shooting on the ground, nice solid platform, stopping that bipod from sliding around. The other thing, which is a good thing to have, is a little scope level. I've got one on the bottom of the uh, of the sports match mount there, but it's a uh, with all the uh, tact cam and that on there, it does make it a little bit difficult to see. I can just about see it, but uh, so yeah, really, that is a good thing to have because what you need to do is you need to have the rifle upright. Otherwise, when you put corrections in, you're not getting a true uh, reading down range because essentially the bullet's going like that and dropping into the target. So if your rifle's canted over to one side, rather than doing that, you're sort of doing that. So yeah another little essential thing um the other thing is obviously good quality ammunition this stuff's pretty good this normal stuff uh uses the hornady um, v max bullets which are they're really good i use them quite a lot with the ldx's and stuff so they're all much the same all hornady bullets seems to be pretty good so uh they seem to be quite nice in this rifle so we've had some pretty consistent shots and that on that target and i think we've got the uh the um drops and that squared away we haven't had too much wind coming through here mainly because we're sheltered by those banks so uh, but yeah it gives you a little insight into uh, long range shooting anyway right that's it for the 243 and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have another look elsewhere um, using the 2-2 uh, just for a few rabbits uh, mate wants a few rabbits so uh, I'm gonna go around and have a look with a 2-2 and I've got the uh, Alpex night vision scope on that. So, uh, yeah, and that's it. Right. So this evening I've come out to a little small holding just to clear a few rabbits. Um, my mate wants a couple of bunnies for his ferrets and that, so I'm just going to have a little do the rounds around here because there's quite a few rabbits on this little bit of ground. It's probably only an acre or so, but um, I've been here before doing a bit of fox control where they've lost a few um, ducks and that to foxes. So I'm also going to keep my eye out for a fox. Um, but it's a lovely, still, nice and chilly evening. Uh, and I've got with me the 2-2. This is a um, CZ-452, it's one of the old American CZ-452s. I've got on there 
PBIR Mini and also the Hick Alpex um, night vision scope, which is a brilliant little combination. This is, works really nicely on the two, two well, on Zenfire as well, but it's brilliant for this sort of thing. So, got a nice little setup there. And the other thing I must point out is this, this um, head torch. Uh, my mate got me this, it came from Amazon, it was like two for 20 quid or something, but I am really impressed with it. So I'm not plugging it or anything, it's just a really good buy, so I can find the switch. Check this out. Look at that. That is insanely bright. And uh, it's good as well because it lights up all uh, sort of like all around you. So uh, yeah, excellent bit of kit. Well worth, well worth the investment of 20 quid and get two of them can't lose. Right, anyway, enough bright lights and uh, spooking all the rabbits in the area. I'm going to have a little wander around and see if I can find one or two bunnies. So that's the first one in the bag. Good clean headshot. And uh, he was out about 60 meters. So I'm also using the pulsar mergers to spot with, which is really handy because he's got a built-in laser rangefinder. So um, it's ideal for, for uh, use with a 2-2 and that where you've got quite a a uh, curved trajectory so uh, you can get the exact range you know how much you've got to hold over if it's a little bit further. only about 30 meters.
So, nice little bag of five rabbits there, so our mates ferrets will be pleased with them. Uh, the uh, landowner here will be quite pleased as well because it's a little horse paddock that we've just been walking around here and um, horses and rabbit holes don't mix particularly well. So, but um, yeah, I've had a fun couple of hours out and the Alpex scope has performed very nicely. Not that there's anything particularly testing there. All these, all these rabbits were 50, 60 metres. I think one was 30, but the rest were around about sort of 50, 60 metres. Uh, all shots were taken off the recon tripod there, nice and sturdy. So yeah, we've had a good, uh, good couple of hours out. But um, that's it for tonight anyway. So uh, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.